technology adoption in Mumbai market is not there in the very high or mature level compared to the global market it's because of the kind of developers you're looking at it can be developer at the growth stage developer who is just building the name or the completely branded developer the market around may not necessarily have the absorption for 50 flats all at once on a rental basis variable costs may not can i balance this cost by uh, shortening the construction cycle of my project? Mm. Yes. So, you know, we are noticing when it comes to now second generation and third generation players in real estate market, mm. the digital transformation is already happening. But when I talk about these players, they are being more open when it comes to technology and real estate technology, be hot tech, prop tech, clean tech. So, what do you think the future would be? Do would we see more tech enabled solutions not just for the customer but also now being in the back end where the operations to the construction level everything would be applied so it becomes seamless so we are definitely going to see more tech tech is there to stay 100 percent the way tech is being integrated uh, in the global real estate industry is fantastic we are still opening up to it which also means that at least in the uh, it, and I'm going to strictly talk about Mumbai real estate uh, industry over here there will be certain teething problems but then you get over it see these things the, the tech comes with its own prejudices and inhibitions mm. but then the more you use it the more you understand it the more better you can apply it mm. and you know you get there mm. eventually when I was in architecture, AutoCAD became a thing. Like when I was learning architecture, AutoCAD became a thing at that point of time. Mm -hmm. My professors used to absolutely hate it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you draft it, your your soul connects with the design and all that who have or just you know your, your opinion on the entire thing. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen how AutoCAD made life easy. Yeah. You move a step more than that, there is 3ds Max. A step more than that is Google SketchUp. A step more than that is Revit. When you come to Revit, within Revit, there's BIM models, the building information modular systems. People today understand that virtually I can recreate the building brick by brick mm -hmm. to the same level, to the same scale. Yeah. I can therefore have an idea about the problems that I can already encounter. What is the limitation to this? The limitation to this is the skill set of the person who's handling the BIM model. Mm. Like the limitation to me building my superstructure or my structure is mm. the ability or the skill set of my green guy, my contractors, my uh, mm. people involved. Similarly, over here, the limitation is to the guy who's handling the BIM model. Now, if you're getting a good guy or a good person mm. with a solid reputation, with a proven track record, little more expensive then please go penny foolish pound wise mm. you know don't try to save 10,000 20,000 over you still want the BIM and then you know uh, get something where you have to compromise mm. go for the person who has the track record mm. also understand what technologies you actually need to apply and what technologies you can go without mm. that is actually a certain uh, decisions that we take to the cost benefit analysis what if I have a PMC instead of a build model mm. for the same cost? Yeah. Does that make more sense to me? To me personally, it absolutely does. Mm. What if I have a PMC and a build model? Does that make sense to me? Mm. Okay. What kind of value can it generate? Mm. Can it make my construction happen faster? Can it make my uh, the life easier for me and my end customer? If these are things that can happen, what is the applicability of it? What is the, uh, what is the, uh, you know, set of complications that can arise from it on the labor force that is on the site? Mm -hmm. These are decisions that you have to take and you have to take it, you know, across the spectrum of your project. Mm -hmm. If it makes sense, then do implicate it. If not, then maybe wait for that technology to become that much more integrated within the industry you know people do arrive people do come in mm. and they do make better things mm. out there you know but let them let them also get more frequented with this mm. and then when things are going good they are going solid 
stick with the in uh, you know in the box thinking. Mm -hmm. You can you can jump to the forefront when the forefront is very firm, so to speak. To that aspect, there is also top down architecture, top down construction. It is where you simultaneously construct your uh, basement and you know you construct your corners and everything. The whole thing happens together, and the life cycle of the construction becomes shorter. Yeah. Sounds great. It is happening yeah. uh, uh, on a global scale. Yeah. How much of it has happened with it? Mumbai? How yeah. practical is it to integrate it? Yeah. You know how practical is it to actually do it with bricks and mortar? Yeah. Do you know a person? So there are these. You have to with technology. You have to do your research. On how much can you actually integrate within your project or not? Yeah. And if you can, then go for it. These things they actually help out. Like yeah. one of the underlying uh, variable costs of redevelopment is actually rentals. Yeah. For redevelopment society. Yeah. I redevelop a society. I am even a small one. I am emptying uh, thirty flats together. Yeah. If I am emptying a bigger society, I am emptying fifty flats together. The market around may not necessarily have the absorption for 50 flats all at once on a rental basis. Mm. What is that going to create? That is going to create a spike in it. This variable cost is going up. Can I balance this cost by uh, shortening the construction cycle of my project? Mm. Yes. Over there, in the short term, that might be a bigger cost to me, but in the long term, it is definitely a better value proposition. So we look at it from that perspective, technology. Or at the same time, even marketing wise, yeah. how how much uh, how faster can my inventory go? You know, based on the data that I can rely on, what is that uh, subset of the parameters for that data to come to its conclusions? Yeah. So you have you know these technologies are relatively new. You have to understand them before you actually apply them. You have to understand the track record of these technologies and then you know that okay, this has been applied, there are proven case studies, there are proven success stories, let's do it. So True, I agree, but would, would, would you say that like how we decide on MNT's basis on the demographic, right? Hmm. Would you say that technology adoption in Mumbai market is not there in the uh, very high or mature level compared to the global market it's because of the kind of developers you're looking at it can be developer at the growth stage developer who is just building the name or the completely branded developer so my question is it can be also basis on the where the developer is at what stage right sometimes at the growth stage they might not see technology it can be a budget thing also so do you think it is also basis on what the developer is at what stage that's why the technology adoption maybe is lesser so definitely it has to do with the developer being at whatever stage they are in the life cycle of their project 100 percent. but it also depends on again the uh the track record of the technology itself see there is prefabricated construction that is going on in uk since mm -hmm. world war ii when Blitzkrieg used to happen over there, when the Germans bombed, uh, you know, the absolute soul out of a city, they knew they had to make it faster. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't live the way you, you know, in a squatter time, suddenly unsanitary and everything, you had a shrink population already, mm -hmm. you had to construct faster. So they did. Mm -hmm. You tried to do that in India, in, within Mumbai, within, you know, the MMR region itself. The biggest challenge that happened was waterproof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you know, now we are doing this in 2020. That has already happened po uh, post World War, whatever 1956. You know, whatever, whenever the uh, Second World War. It could not get perfected. Mm -hmm. You know, so then automatically one or two projects, the technology itself gets a prejudice against it. Mm -hmm. Now over there in UK. The uh, most of the uh, ownership is a rental basis, mm. you know. So if I don't like my flat, I can always move out over here. The person is buying it, mm. he has to live with it. Mm. The consequences of you adopting a technology, uh, you know, going in a little blind, so to speak, has a different impact. At the end of the day, people do have their inhibitions with what technology, when to use. 
But that innovation can come not having the awareness also about the technology, right? There is an awareness issue, but at the end of the day, if I go to my, let's say, I just go to my dad and I'm like, like, oh, I want to accommodate this technology within my project. The first question that you will ask is, uh, you know, kidna chal raha hai? Kidna means like, or konsi? Or konsi jaga pe chal raha hai? Like, where in India is this going on? Where in Dubai? Which other developers are going on? Okay. If I say that Dubai pe chal raha hai, Dubai mein kar raha hai, second hai, kharcha kya hai? You know, can I sustain getting that team over here and doing this thing? And then I have to explain basically the life cycle and the this thing, you know, that, okay, see, this is the impact that will have. That perspective matches up then yes. Now awareness issue, awareness issue wise, I can be aware of a plethora of technologies mm-hmm. across the board. How many of them can I actually afford? Is another question. People mm-hmm. tend to do it. For a smaller project also, people have used CI matrix. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, people know that you cannot hold on to your inventory. You want to... Yeah, and also data know. analytics is something Absolutely. now every developer Absolutely. has to open up to. When it came in, there were still questions at that point of time also, how reliable is this data? You can get lost in this data. What's the point of this data? Is it so good to ask local brokers? What's going on in the market? They show soft lag in the day. They show soft lag in the day. So, somewhere, you know, the perspective shift happens and we are there. You know, we are still open to it. It is going to take time. Yeah, it is going to take time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We cannot expect, neither should we expect an overnight change. So somewhere, you know, there are there are also uh, government policies mm. into play. Mm. Today, if I have to do prefabricated construction, how much of it is actually being compliant with the, you know, the standards that are set by the government? How much of it is actually earthquake resistant as per the mm. set standards of the government? Yeah. And these are based on certain Inalienable truths that you know the, the data that is set, mm. your tectonic plates, your seismic activity, everything, everything, soil testing, whatever came out already. So I cannot just take technology from some place or out of the globe and just put it. I have to retrofit it. Yeah. That retrofitting will always take its own time, but still, I feel the shift to embracing technology has been a lot more. USA evolved from malls, strip malls, WalMarts to Amazons. Mm. We are seeing that all together, which is why over here they say only channel marketing. Is what is only channel marketing? It is across the board market. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, but today if I tell you that we go Amazon pe flat beach, we go ahead, technology to hire car sakta on ya. You know the innovations because this is a once in a lifetime purchase. Oh. It will take its time for adoption, which is why Amazon also started the first product as books. You know, it is it is the TG that is going to easily adapt these things. And it is the same thing with even this. Apart from the technologies that you know are still coming in, there are certain technologies that uh, we have you know uh, wholeheartedly adopted. Mm. Like drone technology is something that you know when it came in, people already understood that it is so important to zoom out on your project and you know see the landscape around it. Talk about it. See where on where all your vantage points are. See how uh, you see. You know what will be the view of your flats. Yeah. Kind of like well, this is possible by the drone surveys that happen today. Mm. In fact, to a level where there are there are these certain uh, drone contractors who actually even uh, do echolocation and soil testing by the sonar that they apply on their drones. I have not yet come across one, but I know that there are quite a few that are there. Uh, would I like to use them? Of course, absolutely. Mm. You know, it is about the uh, speed at which I'm getting the data and how reliable it is. Yeah. So there are these, there are certain technologies across the value chain that are already there. Aluform, for that matter. Mm. Aluform, when it had uh, come in, it was something that was looked at. Ki only for bigger projects, you know, we should use it. We can use it. Mm. For smaller projects, it compromises on rigidity, flexibility, vagera, vagera. but now people are understanding that when I have a typical floor, I can look at hybrid structures and then I can use part aliform, part conventional and I can actually create a fantastic structure which is that much more uh, waterproof and you know that much more structurally sound, that much more aesthetically pleasing 
So we are adopting them. It is again about the scale, awareness, and understanding about uh, and the proof of concept of the technology itself. So, sure. so lastly, I want to ask you. Like it, it was interesting you brought the Amazon and Omni Channel example. We have seen the evolution of brokers. Brokers also happening yeah. in Indian real estate, right? Earlier, it was a traditional method by bringing in clients, showing them the uh, apartments or the land or whatsoever. Now we have also now seen mandate business coming in. We have noticed the tech enabled channel partners where they're getting you leads also from online yeah. and also uh, providing you sales uh, officers on on your sites and everything. So when it comes to broker market, and I'm sure you must have dealt with your projects with the mm -hmm. brokers, do you see the traditional method will go away sooner and more of this mandate business, more of this channel partners where uh, this bigger the players are, for example, Square Yards, and uh, will be taking over the market? I I don't think that the entire market will be captured by mm -hmm. the bigger players. Majority of it, yes, of course, but not the entire one. And again, the uh, the performances of each agency uh, agency depends on your hyper local market. Yeah. You know, there are certain places like there is Parley East. Parley East is an area where bigger layouts. There is one bigger layout that I know of now being done by Atharva. Other than that, the layouts are always smaller. The sizes are smaller. The demographic that is there in Parley is essentially those that are 40, 50 plus. Mm. Where they themselves can also not, uh, you know, use the technology that these big groups rely on always. Mm. Mm. You know, because Anarok uh, and uh, GLL or whatever, Guardian, or it, all of them are quite reliant on the technology that they use apart from their network of. Mm. Uh, you know, ground force, mm. brokers, etc, etc. But at the end of the day, how much of it can be adapted by the end customer from which area and where? Mm.